Oh, yuck. Oh, disgusting. Since life isn't always only filled with successes, here are the top 10 fast food items that totally failed in America. Part 4. What's this stuff that looks like sand? It's quinoa. Nope. McDonald's McWrap. What would you like today? McWrap. Uh, Everybody knows that McDonald's is not the place you go to when you're in the mood for some healthy food. No, McDonald's is the place you go when you want something greasy, tasty, familiar, and fast. So when the McWraps made their debut in 2013, it left a lot of people wondering if McDonald's had lost its way and was beginning to drift away from its original motto. This release was supposed to make customers who love fresh sandwiches stray away from Subway and also be a big hit with the health-conscious millennials. However, the McWraps did neither. The chain was trying to look more appealing to the younger generation in search of healthier fare, but the McWrap marketing did not go according to plan, and the item ended up only lasting a couple of years before it was slowly phased out. Apparently, fresh vegetables wrapped in a tortilla were not what people associated McDonald's with, and the idea freaked a lot of them out. Sounds like a great idea, Oprah. Two, one. In the end, they were simply not worth the hassle, and McDee's got rid of them. How about a pickle? Can I eat the pickle? Well, there's a lot of salt in it, but yeah, it's fine. Duncan, free iced coffee day. For, the, for these? Free. These are complimentary. Complimentary, free, whatever you want. If you put two of people's favorite things in the same sentence, you can be sure of having a great success on your hands. In Duncan's case, it was when they decided to put free and iced coffee together to create one of the best events ever. At least it should have been. To treat its loyal customers and celebrate its 60th anniversary, Duncan decided to announce a free iced coffee day, and obviously it got people really excited. However, as the chain learned the hard way, there is such a thing as reading the fine print carefully, something not a lot of people did before showing up at their local Duncan's expecting a free cup of iced joe. Oh. Okay, I see. You think this has nothing to do with you. People who bothered to read the fine print knew that this amazing promotion was only taking place at participating locations in six states. Those who didn't get that far in their reading marched down to their local Duncan all giddy, unaware of the disappointment they would later experience. Needless to say, Duncan made sure never to make the same mistake again and always put key information where everyone can see it. Life is about making mistakes, right? McDonald's McLean Deluxe. Don't eat a burger yet. First, tell me your name. Decidedly, McDonald's and diet do not belong in the same sentence. Back in the 1990s, however, McDee's tried to market its food as a more sophisticated fast food option by releasing an entire deluxe line. It had the intention of capturing the adult consumer market by presenting a burger with more grown-up tastes, whatever that means. Among this line was the McLean Deluxe. The burger was supposed to be the healthier version of a regular McDonald's burger and consisted of ketchup, mustard, lettuce, pickles, and tomatoes, along with a reduced fat patty. Hey man, what are you doing? Nothing much. Just making the best burger ever. It was advertised as 90% fat free as it contained 10 grams of fat compared to the Big Mac's 26. The problem? The taste of the patty, or rather, the lack thereof. The patty was described as being flavorless and unappealing, and it wasn't long before the use of carrageenan was put to shame. Fish and an apple pie, thanks. Excuse me, what's in the beef patties? Burger King, bacon sundae. Get you anything else? Maybe a little bacon. You say bacon and everyone's on board. You say Sunday and oof, you've got yourself a deal. But if you say bacon Sunday, now you've gone too far. It seems like when Burger King decided to come up with its bacon Sunday in 2012 as part of its new limited edition summer menu, it didn't get the memo of what is acceptable and what isn't. The dessert wasn't anything too complicated, really. It consisted of plain vanilla soft serve along with some chocolate and caramel syrup and some bacon bits sprinkled on top. This Sunday is gonna taste great! Aren't you gonna help me, Gary? Had BK stopped there, it might have been somewhat okay, but no, it took it one step further. The Sunday also featured a giant, thick strip of bacon just 
sticking out of the cup. That's where people had trouble. Most people admitted that the bacon was useless and would have rather eaten a standard caramel and chocolate sundae. It's not that people didn't like the bacon, it just didn't seem to belong there. Everybody loves bacon, but sometimes certain lines simply cannot be crossed. Too bad. Eat it. This smells like bandit. Taco Bell Waffle Taco. What is this? A waffle taco? What's next, a pancake enchilada? Chances are you've heard about this particular flop before. It was such a disaster for Taco Bell, people still talk about it today. Of course, we're talking about the waffle taco. The waffle taco was invented in an attempt to jazz up the chain's breakfast menu. And let's just say there would have been way better ways to do so. In 2014, Taco Bell decided to take a waffle, fold it into a taco-like shape, and fill it with your choice of bacon or sausage and scrambled eggs. Oh, and don't forget the packet of syrup you got on the side to drizzle on top. Oh my god, look at that, it's waffles. Delicious waffles. The waffle was described as a little sweet, which didn't overpower the rest of the toppings, and was similar to a frozen waffle. While it doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world on paper, in reality, people had a lot to say about this breakfast innovation. Apparently, the waffle was not crispy in the slightest and was overly oily, not at all what a waffle should be. For some, though, the waffle taco wasn't bad at all and even became a fan favorite. But since it wasn't as successful as the chain had hoped, it was pulled from the menu only a year after its introduction. How's that feel, Jenny? Not good. Not good. McDonald's Super Size. Most people call it a gallon, but they call it the regular. Not exactly a food item, but still a pretty notable fast food fail that happened right here. Starting in 1993, McDonald's would offer its customers the possibility to upgrade their already pretty huge meal by supersizing it. The supersize option was available for your soda, leading up to a good 42 ounces, as well as for your french fries for a total of 7 ounces. Even though this offer sounds a little over the top to begin with, it was still acceptable and very common. Well, until it was phased out in 2004. One of the main reasons why the supersize option was removed from the McD's menu was due to the documentary Super Size Me, directed by Morgan Spurlock. Oh, I love Big Mac. The social experiment involved Spurlock eating only McDonald's for 30 days straight to see what effects it would have on his body. After a month of sustaining himself with three fast food meals a day and supersizing his meal whenever he was offered, the results were rather scary and unsettling. His impressive weight gain and psychological repercussions had a lot of people worried. This put a spotlight of bad publicity on McDonald's. No matter what pushed the chain to take this step, the important part is the Super Size Me option is no longer available. You want to dip a size your meal for a quarter more? Want me to punch a size your face for free? In and out, 100 by 100. I bet you can't eat a Krabby Double Deluxe in one bite. When it comes to food challenges, most people are always down, no matter what it implies. And since cheesy burgers are one of the best ways to treat yourself, a burger challenge shouldn't be too scary, right? At In-N-Out, every burger is cooked fresh to order and tailored to fit your preferences and appetite. You can get the regular cheeseburger with only one patty, or you can spice things up and add an extra patty, or two, or apparently 99. You can't eat that! What do you know? There's more nutritional value in the toy than the food. Technically, the chain offers the 3x3, three three, which includes three beef patties and three slices of cheese, along with the 4x4. Four four. Those are the official and highest meat-to-cheese ratios that can be found on the menu. But if you're feeling a little more adventurous and want to test the limits of your stomach, you can pretty much get as many patties as you want. And for a while, you could even get a burger with as many as 100 beef patties and 100 slices of cheese. The 100 by 100. If you think this doesn't sound all that legit today, you would be right. You guys know the rules. You got five minutes. Half-eaten weenies don't count. May the best man win. Ready? Burger King Halloween Whopper. Quack, quack. Oh, my little 
hot ducky. Burger King is no stranger to adding some colorful touches to their Whoppers, especially around Halloween. Over the years, we've pretty much seen every color of the rainbow, from red to green to translucent white. Halloween is a pretty spooky time to go to Burger King. Back in 2015, BK was looking to scare up even more sales during the holiday and released its Halloween Whopper, which was the definition of a dark burger. It featured all the regular Whopper toppings, only they were all between tinted black buns and came with A1 steak sauce. You haven't had any A1 sauce? Yeah. My hula. We appreciate the effort, but maybe Burger King should steer clear of colored buns for a while. I declare this extreme burger the winner. Oh man, you've created a whopper. Pizza Hut, flavor of now. I'll order a pizza. The usual. The usual. Oh. Pizza is one of the foods in life that just seems timeless. We will probably and hopefully never get tired of the good old topping, sauce, and crust as they are simply ingrained in our culture. As Pizza Hut began playing with the winning recipe back in 2014, it soon realized the importance of classics. The Flavor of Now menu was another attempt by a chain to attract hungry millennial customers by featuring innovative pizza toppings. The line had five new toppings, which included premium salami, sliced banana peppers, classic meatballs, fresh spinach, and even Peruvian cherry peppers. But that's not all. It also had eight all-new crust flavors like honey sriracha, salted pretzel, and fiery red pepper to make sure your pizza had fancy flavors going all the way to the edge. Yes, and yes. Yes! While on the surface, it sounds like a genius idea that should be an immediate success, it's not exactly clear what happened. Pizza Hut was just trying to become elite and look more sophisticated, but the idea just ended up blowing up instead. You can talk. Dairy Queen, Moo Latte. It's happening. DQ heard our call. Even though this particular item is still on the menu today, it doesn't mean that it doesn't qualify as a total fast food failure. As a way of competing with the Starbucks craze, in 2004, Dairy Queen decided to offer its very own blended coffee called the Moo Latte. The mixture of coffee and ice cream was an instant hit, and people seemed to get on board with the idea pretty quickly. <laughs> Count me in! Well, at least until the word got around that the name of the beverage wasn't exactly appropriate. The word the word mulatto, which is derived from the Spanish word for mule, is considered a slur, which left many people wondering whether or not DQ was aware of its mistake. That was awesome. We're always open 24-7. Just tap or click for another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell. And hey, leave us a comment.